Welcome to today's edition of Men of Eternity. My name is Reverend Kingsley, Amen. And I'm here to share the Lord, the word of the Lord with you. Amen. I pray that this word that is coming to you, it will be life and spirit to you. Amen. I pray that the Holy Spirit will breathe upon this word and this word will become a living thing in your life. It will not just, just be words you are hearing, but I pray that this message, this word will become a living thing be a living thing in your life in jesus name amen so i have a wonderful message for you amen and i've entitled my message christianity is impossible christianity is impossible a lot of us don't know that christianity is impossible and that is the reason why we are actually failing in our christian work amen most at times after we get born again will make a lot of resolutions that now that I am born again, I will not drink anymore, I will not smoke anymore, I will not last after a man, I will not fornicate, I will not tell a lie, I will not do this. Rather, I will start reading my Bible, I will start evangelism to people, I will start doing this, I will start doing that. We make all sorts of resolutions, amen. And unfortunately, a day will not pass by, two days will not pass by, we will find ourselves going back to those things again amen then we become we feel so condemned we go to god we beg god for forgiveness and after that we make another set of resolution that we will not do this again we will now stop doing this and we'll start doing this we make these resolutions and we go back to them again amen this is because people have not realized that christianity is impossible amen now when you get to know that christianity is impossible that's when you will actually have the way of victory amen because many do not know that Christianity is impossible, therefore they are trying their best to do what is not possible. Amen. So today my message is going to bless you. It is going to open your understanding and open your mind to a lot of things. Amen. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will quicken your mind and understand it towards this message in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Christianity is impossible. Let us take our scripture from the book of Luke, Luke chapter 18, Luke chapter 18, Luke chapter 18, verse 18, and a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? None is good save one, that is God. Amen. So, a rich young ruler came to Jesus, asked Jesus, I want to receive eternal life. Now, what should I do to receive eternal life? Now, first of all, that question that he asks, Amen, he reveals what was in the mind of this um, young ruler. We'll talk about it. Amen. Now, he called Jesus good master. And Jesus said, there is no one good except the Father in heaven. Which means that Jesus did not even consider himself to be good. Amen. Now, we need to understand because a lot of people think that we have good men in this world. Now, when we say we have good men in this world, we are talking about their deeds. They give to the orphans, they give to the widows, and they help the sick. They, they, they pay people's rent, they pay people's school fees. Uh, they give people scholarship, they pay people's bills, and because of that, we call them good. Indeed, they are good deeds they are doing, but they are not good. Amen. Now, we need to understand that they are not good. Amen. Say the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, verse 20. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these things I have kept from my youth. Now when Jesus said these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? 
for it is easier for a camel to go through a needle through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they that had it said, Who then can be saved? And he said, These the things which are impossible with men are impossible with God. Now Jesus is talking about going into the kingdom of heaven. A rich young ruler came to ask him about eternal life, and he also gave an answer. And he said, It is difficult for a rich man to go into heaven, and it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. We all know the eye of a needle is very, very, very small. It's so small that even when you're putting a thread in through the eye of a needle, you have to be very careful. Amen. Now, Jesus is saying that a camel, a camel can pass through the eye of a needle easier than a rich man go to heaven. And the people said, who then can be saved? Then Jesus gave the answer. The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Now, this statement that Jesus made, it's in Jesus is trying to draw our attention to the fact that it is impossible. It is impos impossible for man to receive eternal life. This statement is in twofold. The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. And they are talking about eternal life. So Jesus made a statement. This statement concerning the topic they were discussing, which is eternal life, entry into the kingdom of heaven. So it is impossible for a man, it is impossible for any human being on earth to enter into the kingdom of heaven, and it's impossible for that same person to receive eternal life. But it is possible with God. Amen. So when I say Christianity is impossible, I'm talking about you and I, that Christianity is an impossible life for us. But with God, it is possible. A lot of Christians don't know this. A lot of Christians are like the rich young man who came to Jesus. Let's go back to the rich young man and look at the question he asked. A certain ruler asked, Jesus, asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? What shall I do? He, the question itself reveals what was in the mind of this ruler. That he was thinking that he can do something to enter into eternal life. No, the question should have been, how can I enter into eternal life? How can I? But he said, what should I do? Thinking that there's something he can do to enter into eternal life. A lot of Christians are working with this mentality. Amen. We'll talk about it. We'll get there. Let's, let's continue with this young girl. Now, Jesus said, go and sell all your goods and come and follow me. Now, a lot of people have taken the scripture to think that Jesus hates prosperity. No. Now, this man has kept all the law, but Jesus said, you lack one thing. So the one thing that this man was lacking is that his riches. He was depending on his riches. His belief, his faith was in his riches. And that was his hindrance into the kingdom of heaven. His was his riches. Yours may be your family. Yours may be the work you do. Yours may be the career you have chosen, the path you have chosen to work on in terms of career. Now, Jesus might demand that you leave that career and follow him. Hallelujah. So it is not about the riches. It was about the fact that the rich man was dependent on his riches to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And therefore, God had to take away what he depends on. You see, whatever each or every one of us lacks one thing. There are so many things we've been able to do by our natural strength, even without even God. But there's also a one or two things that no matter how hard we try, we cannot stop doing this. Someone may be able to stop fornicating, but cannot stop telling lies. That thing is just one thing. Someone may be able to stop lies, but cannot stop drinking. That drinking is just one thing. And this one thing, it is there to remind us that it is impossible for man 
to receive eternal life. It is impossible for man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. It is impossible to live the Christian life. Jesus said, it is easy for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, you and I know that it is impossible for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. So if indeed a camel can go through the eye of a needle, then it's, there must be some other power that will help this camel to go through the eye of a needle because it is very, very impossible for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. So for a camel to go through at the eye of a needle, it means that camel must be helped by another power, which is God. So Jesus was saying, this is the same statement he was saying, he was trying to say that it is impossible for man to receive eternal life. It is impossible for man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Except God is with them. Amen. But unfortunately, there are Christians who think that by what they are doing, they can enter into the kingdom of heaven. They think that because they know how to pray, they know how to preach, they know how to live a holy life, they don't steal, they don't fornicate, uh, they read the Bible every day, they do this and do that because they think that because of the things that they do, therefore they have the right to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now Jesus said, sell those things and come and follow me. The key to entering into the kingdom of heaven is to be with Jesus, to follow Jesus. To depend on Jesus, to look up to Jesus, not to look up to what you are doing. Amen. Now let me show you something in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. And seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came to him. So this is Jesus. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, So we know the beatitudes of Jesus. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the meek, blessed are they that mourn, blessed are they that hunger for righteousness and all. Now, all these things that Jesus was teaching, it got to a point that the teaching shifted to how Christians must live. Now, Jesus began to lay down one after the other the requirements, what is God is expected from us, what are the expectations God is have, has uh, have on us as Christians. And I'll read the first one. Amen. In the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 21. Ye have heard, Jesus is still teaching. Ye have heard that it was said of them of old, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. Amen. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. And, but whosoever shall say, thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Now, Jesus is saying that in those days, you were commanded that the only way you can lose the glory of God, you can lose your salvation, the only way you can find yourself in judgment is when you kill a human being. But I am telling you that if you tell someone a fool, if you say someone is a fool, that statement alone is enough for you to be cast into hellfire. Now tell me, between the laws of Moses and the laws of Jesus, which one is more severe? You see, a lot of people think that Jesus is, came to lose nothing. No, he didn't come to lose nothing. He actually came to make us know the true essence of the law. When you say a fool, you are qualified to go to heaven. There is no... There is, there, there is, there is, there is, there is no any other sentence for you that to go to hell, hell by just saying a fool. And he's saying that if you're angry, just being angry with someone, that alone is enough for you to enter into judgment. Just being angry. Now, tell me you think Christianity is possible for a man. Now, he went on to talk about marriage. Then went on to talk about, um, let's look at the statements. Matthew chapter 5 verse 27. Ye have heard that it is said by them of old time, that shall not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever look on a woman to last after her had committed adultery with her already in his heart. Now look at that. In the olden days, you have to go and look for someone's wife, sleep with someone's wife before you are considered 
as a sinner before you, you are declared as an adulterer. Amen. Jesus said, if you look at a woman, which this is a woman, which means whether the person, the one is married or not, as, as long as the person is a woman, when I look at that woman and last after her, I've already committed adultery. Whether she's married or not, I've already committed adultery. Now tell me again, between the law and Christianity, which one is more severe? Now, Jesus is the one who brought grace. And under grace, look at the laws concerning grace. Now, he went on to talk about if your eye is worn, you take it out. If your hand is worn, you cut it out. And he said that if someone sue you, someone sue you to take your dress, add the coat to it. If someone slaps you on the right, turn the left. Now, look at all these things Jesus was saying. And Christians think that it is possible for them to live their Christian life. Now, Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, the last statement Jesus made. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Now, Jesus, after teaching all this thing, lifted up the standard even higher than more and said, The perfection of the Father is your standard. God is expecting you and I to be perfect just like himself, exactly like himself. So I ask you, can you live the Christian life? This is where you must understand and know that to live the Christian life, you need the help of another. And this is where Jesus Christ comes in, grace comes in. Because Jesus Christ is the only human being who was able to live exactly as demanded by God. He was the only one who was able to live up to the standard of God, the perfection of God. And therefore, it is only him that can help you and I to also become perfect before God. It is not by your praise. Now, if God should take your prayers and, 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 and measure your prayers to his standard, you realize that your prayer is not really prayer. Whatever you think you are doing, that you think that because of what you are doing, you qualify for heaven, stop it. Stop thinking that. I'm going to show you something in the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Verses number 1. Oh foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Verse 2. This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or by hearing of faith. Now, Paul is asking, let me ask you a couple questions. He's speaking to the Galatians. And I'm speaking to you. The Holy Spirit that you received, did you receive it because you were doing everything perfect or you received it because you believed in Jesus Christ? That's my question. My first question to you. How did you receive the Holy Spirit? Is it by faith in Jesus Christ or because of what you were doing? Amen. Then he went on to say, verse 3, Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, ye are made perfect by the flesh? Now, let me, let, let me explain this statement. He repeated, Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, you want to be perfect in the flesh? Now, whenever a sinner encounters Jesus, he receives the Lord Jesus as his personal Savior and he becomes born again. After a sinner is, becomes born again, the Bible says that when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and accept him, immediately you become the righteousness of God. So you became the righteousness of God by not praying, by not stopping sin, by not stopping fornicating. It is not because you stopped lying, that's why you became righteous. It's not because you stopped fornicating, that's why you became righteous. It's not because you are fasting, that's why you became righteous. It's not because you are holy, that's why you became righteous. You became righteous because you believed in Jesus Christ. And Paul is asking them that after believing in Jesus Christ, after accepting Jesus Christ, after becoming righteous by your faith in Jesus Christ, now you want to make yourself perfect by depending on what you are doing. We are righteous as Christians by our faith in Jesus Christ. Most Christians, after they become righteous, the next thing they do is that they now put down resolutions. I will stop this, I will stop that, I will stop that so that I will become righteous. If you think that what, by stopping something, you become righteous, 
then why did you when you accepted Jesus Christ to become a righteousness? Because if you believe in yourself that you can stop fornicating, you can stop stealing, you can stop doing all these things to become righteous, then you don't need Jesus. So these people, they have begun their Christian work in the spirit. And how did they begin their Christian work in the spirit? By believing in Jesus Christ. And now that they believe in Jesus Christ and they become righteous and holy, they are now going back to depend on their, what they are doing. Going back to depend on what they are able to do by themselves to become righteous. And Paul is saying they are fools. And lots of us, after we've become born again, we now think that if I should stop fornicating, then I'll be righteous. Then what, what is the essence of your faith in Jesus Christ? If you think that it is by your stopping fornication that will make you righteous. You think that it's by your prayers that will make you holy. You think that it's by your doing something that will make you righteous, holy, and accepted by God. Remember, Jesus has already made the declaration that it is impossible with men. Hallelujah. So, a lot of Christians, they become into Christianity, they've been blessed, they've been, they become righteous and blessed and holy by their faith in Jesus Christ. But after that, they now want to depend on their prayer life. They feel that the more they pray, the more they will become holy. No. You see, let me tell you something. When you become born again by faith in Jesus Christ, you must continue working in the Christian life. You must continue working as a Christian by still depending on Jesus Christ, your faith in Jesus Christ as your righteousness. You don't become righteous by faith in Jesus Christ by in, in, at the beginning of your Christian work and after becoming righteous by faith at the beginning, you put that aside and now you begin to depend on your own prayer life, depend on your own reading Bible, depend on your own living holy, depend on your own uh, doing good, giving to the poor, doing these things, doing that. You depend on those things to become righteous. When you do that, you are falling from grace. Let me show you. The same Galatians chapter 5. Galatians, the book of Galatians is written about, it, it's, it's a book written, Paul wrote to address this matter. The people of Galatians, they were going back to the law. They were going back to the laws of Moses, trying to do one or two things by themselves to become holy and righteous and to become accepted by, by God. And that's why Paul wrote the book of Galatians. It is written to those who want to depend on what they are doing for God to accept them. They don't want to depend on Jesus Christ. They think that, yes, when I become born again, yes, that one is by faith in Jesus Christ. But now that I become born again by faith in Jesus Christ, the rest of the Christian journey, it is by what I am doing by myself. Galatians chapter 5. Amen. Verse 3. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to the whole Lord. Amen. Christ has become of no effect until you will serve out of you are justified by the Lord. You are falling from grace. Amen. Verse 5. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. We wait for the hope of righteousness by faith, not by our works. The hope of righteousness is eternal life, going to heaven. And we wait for it by faith, not by our works. So after you become born again by faith, you must continue living the Christian life by still depending on Jesus Christ as your righteousness, depend on Jesus Christ as your holiness, depend on Jesus Christ as your sanctification, depend on Jesus Christ as your everything. Don't depend on what you're doing. Stop sin. Stop fornicating. Stop lying. Stop doing all those things, but never depend on them. Never think that because of what you are doing, that is what will make God accept you. The Bible says you are falling from grace. These people of Galatians, they become righteous and be, they've been accepted by God through faith. Now they are going back to circumcise themselves, thinking that if they circumcise themselves, that's when they become righteous. So they left the grace of God, they left what Jesus has done for them, and they decided to establish their own righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's, let's read something. In the book of Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. Romans 
Romans chapter 9. It says, Who are Israelites to whom pertain the adoption and the glory and the covenant and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promise? Whose are the fathers and of whom concerning the flesh Christ came? Who is over all and blessed forever? Amen. Verses. Not as though the word of God had none effects, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel, neither, be, neither because they are the seed of Abraham. They are all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Now he is talking about the natural people of Israelite who are depending on their obeying of the law of Moses and comparing to us Christians who have also become children of Abraham, true faith. Amen. And he is saying that these people who are by natural descent, the Israelites, the children of Abraham, they have decided to establish their own way into righteousness and have denied the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. I want to listen. Romans chapter 3, verse 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, manifested, being witnessed by the law and by the prophet. The true righteousness of God has been manifested, which is not part of the law, does not come out of the law. It does not come out of what you do. It does not come out of your own works. It comes by faith. Even the righteousness of God, which is of, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon them all that believe, for there is no difference. So the sin is that whether you are Israelites by birth, the natural birth of Israelite, or you are not a natural birth of Israelite um, nation. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you are righteous. Hallelujah. Now, Colossians. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Now, when you read Romans, Romans says that by faith in Jesus Christ we have become righteous. The Romans chapter 3, verse 20, 21, that I just read. By faith, we say the righteousness of God has manifested apart from the law. And this righteousness is by faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, the Bible is also saying that as he has therefore received Christ Jesus, so walk in him. Now, you receive Jesus Christ by faith. So walk in him. So the way you became righteous in Christ is the same way you continue living the righteous life in Christ. So by faith you became righteous. By faith you should continue living the righteous life. Not by your works. By what faith? By depending on what Christ has done on the cross. So you wake up every morning because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I am righteous and holy. Yes, I will not fornicate today. I will not lie today. I will pray today. I will fast today. But all these things I am doing is not what will make me righteous. Rather, it is the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and my faith in Him that will make me righteous. Every day of your Christian life, you should work with this mentality that you are not righteous and you are not accepted by God by what you are doing. Rather, you are righteous and accepted by God by what Christ has done on the cross. This is why I said Christianity is impossible. So for you, it is impossible. But by faith in Christ Jesus, it is possible. But a lot of Christians do not know that Christianity is impossible. Therefore, they are trying to work their way out. They think that if they stop makeup, that's when they go to heaven. They think that if they tie their hair, that's when they go to heaven. They think that if they if they don't wear jeans, trousers, they will go to heaven. When you are working with this mentality, you are falling from grace because what are you doing? You have denied what Christ has done and you are trying to depend on your own works to receive eternal life. Just like the young ruler who came to Jesus and said, what must I do? There's nothing you can do. That question that the ruler asked, what must I do to get eternal life? It is a wrong question. There is nothing you can do. Rather, you should have asked, how can I? And the answer Jesus would have given is that by believing in me, you will enter into eternal life and heaven. 
Beloved, Bible says that Jesus Christ is the beginning and the end of our faith. So when you begin the Christian journey by faith in Christ Jesus, you must continue the Christian journey by faith in Christ Jesus. A lot of Christians are struggling because they are depending on what they are doing. They want to do something by their own strength so that God will look at what they are doing and accept them. Beloved, you are frustrating the grace of God. Every time, trust in what Jesus has done to be accepted by God. Amen. My last scripture, probably my last scripture. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 21. And you, that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked ways, yet now hath he reconciled. So you and I, who were wicked and by nature, God has reconciled us. He has brought us back to himself. How? Verse 22. In the body of his flesh, through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreproachable in his sight. So God himself has brought you to himself by his death on the cross to present you. So listen, to present you, to present you. So Jesus is pre presenting you as holy and unblameable and unreproachable in his sight. Verse 23. If so, if ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled and be not moved and be not moved and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard paul is saying that if you continue to put your faith in the gospel what is the gospel jesus died for my sins and therefore i am holy and righteous and i've been accepted by god paul is saying that if you continue your faith in it if you continue, if you continue in the faith, if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard. So if you continue believing in the gospel, that is when Jesus will now present you as holy, unblameable, and unreachable. So he's saying that Jesus will present you as holy, present you, unblameable, which is righteous, and unreachable that's without condemnation jesus is the one going to present you only if the word is if Col colossians chapter 1 verse 22 21 22 and 22 go and read it if you continue in faith of the gospel if you continue so it's not about what you do no no and beautiful aspects of that the more you believe in the gospel the more you believe in what christ has done for you the more you actually will be empowered to stop sinning the only way to stop sinning is to believe in jesus christ that's the only way you can stop sinning actually if you truly believe in him and accept him you will receive the power to stop sinning not by your strength not by your works hallelujah for by grace ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 my last scripture for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourself it is the gift of god not of works lest any man should boast so by grace you are saved this saved that you are saved it is the salvation to heaven and it is by grace you are saved not of your works lest you should boast so don't go about boasting that because i pray therefore i'm going to heaven because i do not fornicate i'm going to heaven because i don't wear jeans stripes i'm going to heaven because i don't wear makeup i'm going to heaven you are deceiving yourself it is by grace truth not what you do no, you're, you're not whatever you do that make you righteous or holy. No, it is by grace that you are saved. My name is Robert Kinsley. This is the end of my message. We shall meet again, God willing. Be on YouTube, subscribe to our channel and Facebook. Follow our page, Men of Eternity. See you again another time. In Jesus' name, amen.